This SHOT Show coverage is sponsored by Ace Virtual Shooting, Filster Holsters, Night Vision Inc., and PTS. Links will be in the description. What is up, YouTube? My name is David Lee, and you're watching Asian with Hat. And we got Hunter over here at Palmetto State Armory, and we're at the Palmetto State Armory booth over here. And what do you have over here? This looks very familiar. This is our X 5.7, so this is a continuation of our Rock series of firearms. This is going to take a Rock Rock Mag with a this is a 23 round full size Rock Mag with a 17 round extension that'll bring you to 40 plus one. This will share the same fire control group as the Rock series of pistols. This particular prototype has a Rock slide and a Rock barrel in production. We will have a dedicated bolt and dedicated barrel. You can also see on this prototype, we are missing a last round ball hold open and a safety. Both of those will be present in the production model. Um, our goal is to get this out in 12 to 18 months, hopefully. That's a, a loose estimate. You know, we don't know for sure yet. And our price point is $9.99 with the Magpul Inbus Pros and Radiant Charging Handle. Again, hopefully very early development. So that's a, uh, just a rough estimate. Awesome. So my question to you is on here, when it comes to this type of, uh, type of idea, would you say that there's some com common parts that are being used based off the AR-15 platform? Yeah, absolutely. So this is just a standard AR-15 charging handle. There's a Radian Raptor. If you don't like the Radian, great. You know, put whatever you want on it. And then, of course, you're reusing some parts from, like, saying so, the Rock, right? Absolutely, yeah. So the more existing hardware we can leverage and the more, you know, parts that we know are good, the, you know, the fire control group in the Rock is very proven, very good. Yeah. Uh, that's one less mechanism we have to design. That's, you know, the sooner we can get out to y'all. Awesome. All right, guys, we got Justin over here with Palmetto State. So what do we got over here? This looks pretty familiar. Yeah, so we got something everybody's been asking for since we introduced the Jackal. Um, yes. 308 version of the Jackal. So yes. So shares a lot of the great things about the Jackal platform, but now brings it in the um, 308 configuration. So uh, starting at the bottom, just like your standard Jackal, this guy's going to be compatible with uh, PSA AR-10 lowers, so the PA-10 lower. Um, all you need is that adapter in the back like we have here. You can see this one's got the F5 stock, but we're also going to have them with Picatinny rails, just like the, uh, the standard Jackal has. Um, we're also working on a proprietary lower for this guy. For those guys that don't like the adapter look, it'll just be a nice, clean look into the upper receiver. Mm -hmm. Up top, you got all the features you love in the Jackal. The monolithic top rail, um, the long stroke gas piston system, the non-reciprocating charging handle, uh, eight position gas block for those guys that are running suppressors. Mm -hmm. And as you can see in the front, we've already got a JMAC muzzle device, pin and welded, so. I'm excited for that just because I actually run a lot of dead air suppressors yeah. Uh, yeah. on my side. So it'd be great to just drop it on without having to redo the uh, flash hider. Right, yep, No, don't have to do anything like that. Um, you already got your gas block, adjustable yep. gas block too, so it's gonna yeah. run perfect. And this just runs basically the SR25 style magazines? Sure, yeah. And um, as you can see on the rail, I don't know if you picked it up or not, it's the same size rail as the standard Jackal, so not yes. that big chunky 308 rail that a lot of people right. don't like. And is this a reciprocating charging handle? Non-reciprocating Non reciprocating yep. Amazing, amazing. Yep, and cool. we'll have different options too for those guys that don't have dead air. We'll have AAC devices, silencer code devices, Hux works possibly in the future. So we got the new Vuk. This is like an AK Jackal hybrid. It's kind of what we consider the modernization of the AK, if you mm. will. Um, so you can see this one's chambered in 5.56 with the 101 style mags. We'll have plans for 5.45 and 7.62 by 39 as well. You can see this is like a KS47 style lower. Um, it molds right into the stock there. Um, have a number of options on this that really step it up from the traditional AK, mm -hmm. like AR pistol grips, AR triggers, AR safeties. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of advantages over the AK style on that. Um, up top, you got your Jackal style upper, so um, AK rear sights on these, so you'll always have a dedicated set of irons on this one. Um, AK front sight post as well. Same non-reciprocating charging handle system. Same long stroke piston system mm -hmm. as well. And then um, eight position gas block. Right. And uh, j another J-Mac muzzle right. device up top. Yeah, there's a lot of J-Macs going on over here, huh? Yeah, we love J-Macs. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, I, one thing I do have to say, there is a running thing going on over here with Palmetto. A lot of stuff that is based on something that is from another platform or something over here. Is it is it something that's going to be a continuing factor with Palmetto State? right now yeah I mean uh, we're always looking at um, you know innovating within our own lines and mm -hmm. then trying to do cool stuff like that um, like I say this one you know is kind of a homebrew thing yes but you can see it's heavily inspired by the AK 521 so and uh, I, I think we may have already answered this but what would be the price point and the release time of this so these are both concept guns so I don't have pricing or release dates but I don't know if he told you about the concept gun program we're doing right now yes but, you know, we're giving the people a voice so they can actually go vote on these and uh, that'll help us prioritize what's coming first. Absolutely. 
What is this little thing over here? So this is the uh, Ocan. So this is something the new Ocan. we're doing. Yep, Ocan stands for Little Wolf. So. Little Wolf. Yep, Wolf Pup Jackal on this guy. Mm -hmm. um, compatible with any of our Jackal uppers mm -hmm. that we've already made. It'll be compatible. Uh, it's a lower receiver, so it's a standard Jackal upper up top. And uh, you can put any of the Jackal uppers up there. You just have to SBR it if you're going with the shorter guys. What's the barrel length on here? Is so this, this guy's a 14.5, so this is a legal rifle. <laughs> yeah. So, so pin and welded on the, on the front pin, end? Pin and welded. Um, this one's got a AAC muscle device. Yes. We'll have tons of different options Ob as well. Obviously, yes. Yeah, so like I say, everything important here, or new here, I guess I should say, is going on in the lower receiver. AR pistol grip up here. Um, our bullpup trigger, which is pretty comparable to a GI style trigger. I'm not gonna lie, that was impressive because I've messed with many bullpups and the one thing that, that's a general consensus with bullpups is that the triggers suck. Yeah. And when we tried this, uh, this is probably the closest thing that could actually surpass like seeing to a Tavor. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and just like the Tavor, I mean, we're planning on doing some upgraded triggers in the future. Yes. They have some options over there. So, for would upgrades you, as well. So, would you be able to use like something that is from like an AR 15 trigger or yet is this no, the No, no. I mean, it's a, it's a bullpup trigger, so it's completely different from an AR trigger. Got but, it. Um, we will be working on upgraded options as well. So Absolutely. We always like to offer some higher end stuff. So. Awesome. AR style safety. Um, and then in the back here, you can see the ambidextrous mag release on this guy. Yes. As well as the bolt catch. Um, we put that right where we think it should be. So when you reinsert, it's right there. You can hit it on the way in. Simplicity, something that something that gives you something similar to a Vayner 15, uh, pulling out the mag and then still hitting the bolt catch. Right, right. And um, like I say, this is, um, We'll sell these as complete rifles, but um, really what this is, is like for the guy that already has a Jackal, but he's always wanted a bullpup, mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to spend two grand to try out a bullpup, so he can buy the lower and uh, turn his Jackal into a bullpup. Okay, so we got something new over here. So yeah. I didn't know that Palmetto State was getting into shotguns. So what's going on over here? Yeah, so this is a new project of ours, the PSA 570. It's one of our concepts we're releasing this year. Um, you can see some similarities to some other shotguns, but this is truly something we've designed from the ground up to be a new platform on the shotgun market, which is something you don't see very often. Right. So we'll start in the back. Um, 870 furniture compatibility. Most um, 870 furniture will work. That's something we wanted to do so the aftermarket's already there when it hits the market. Um, you can see the top tang uh, safety on there. Um, we've moved the slide release to the high ready position, which is where we think it should be. Um, then moving forward, you can see the beveled mag uh, feeding port. So uh, perfect for those guys that want to do quad loads or whatever, fast reloads on the shotgun. Right, right. Um, and this is a pump action, right? Yep, pump action at first. We would probably go into semi-autos as well in the future, but right. that's a ways down the road. Um, it's definitely something we've already been talking about, though. Absolutely. So all the cool stuff on this guy happens in the front. Um, the whole concept behind this is to give the user um, an option to build their own shotgun at home. So unlike other shotguns, you don't need a gunsmith to service it. You can do everything at the house yourself. Um, so independent uh, barrel and magazine tube swaps, um, which is something most shotguns don't have. They're usually uh, adjoined to whatever you get them with. Mm -hmm. So we have a cool little nut system here. So you can take the magazine tube off from the rear and then um, you can also take the barrel off from the rear. So all the lockup happens back here at the receiver. And this hanger up here is just for rigidity. Um, awesome. Whereas traditionally they're combined at the hanger and you can't change them individually. Also, you can see in the front there, um, block front sight post on these. So a wide range of options as far as your uh, front sight goes. Um, all of them will be RMR cut from the factory as well. Awesome. Yep, so uh, like I say, PSA 570, uh, concept gun. So if people like it, if people like the idea, they can go and give it a vote. Uh, but basically, build your own shotgun at home, and that's what we're going for. And then uh, over here, we've got one of our bolt guns, which is something else we're doing new this year. So I have a more basic model here, but the whole idea behind the bolt guns is the same thing. Build it from the ground up, completely user serviceable. Um, so we'll be able to sell actions, triggers, barrels, um, stock kits individually. We got some really cool stuff going on on the Saber side as well, some PRS style guns. Yes. But we'll be able to offer them at like a third of the price of what you can typically get into a PRS style gun for. Absolutely. And it's, PRS is generally a very expensive thing. I have I have friends, uh, a good example of like uh, Impact, and they're my friends in Oklahoma, and theirs are like $5,000. Uh, yeah. I think actions. And then what's the action on this going to be uh, costing? So I don't have pricing because these are in the concept phase, Absolutely. but like our, this is our, um, this is called the Emerge series. So the Emerge will be, um, an action we're designing ourselves. Right. Um, and then they're all 700 style, but these will be machined in house. Right. Uh, on the Sabre line, we'll have some wire cut EDM machined action, so a little higher quality. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot higher quality, really. You're typically playing a major premium for that. Right. Um, 
A couple of the other upgrades, the emerges will come with the Trigger Tech fixed trigger. Yes. And then the sabers will come with the Trigger Tech adjustable trigger mm -hmm. from the beginning. So again, like I say, typically with a bolt gun, you have to buy something like this and then change out everything to get to that chassis system right. you want. But with ours, you'll be able to build that from the beginning because it's a whole build of your own system. So right. again, that's the PSA Emerge Bolt Series. Um, all these are going to have the threaded barrel as well. Yes. So for all you suppressor guys, <laughs> you know, it's typically kind of hard to find a threaded bolt gun barrel, which is, you know, shouldn't be like that. So, right, right. Again, Emerge, um, it's a concept gun right now, but um, one of those things you can vote on for sure. Absolutely. That's impressive over here just because. You know, you got the high end stuff, but you guys are trying to get into, I'm assuming, what would be considered the entry level or mid uh, mid level, just right. to get people right. more interested into the PRS uh, area. Right, and we always, you know, we, we always try to do a great value for the customer, so <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's what we do. All right, so we're over here at the Sabre line of pistols. So, what's going on over here? Yeah, so um, the Sabre line of pistols, the easiest way to think about it is there's a couple other companies that will take other brands products and take them to the higher level so we're yes. we're doing that under the saber name with our own products right. so we've, we've partnered with a couple of the big names in the industry here so mm -hmm. uh, specifically zafiri so we're going zafiri slides and barrels wow these. yeah yes so a major upgrade there um, you can see here this guy is uh, stippled um, this one actually has a cerakote job so we'll offer them with and without cerakote jobs um, also we'll offer them in black colors as well um, but we also have this multicam and different patterns uh, you can see down here we've got the uh, the mag uh, the beveled magwell as well as the mag ex magazine extension. So this is a plus five extension. Um, you can see this is a 17 round grip, so it's a, really a duty sized grip. Uh, moving forward here, we've got upgraded triggers in each of the saber pistols, mm -hmm. and then uh, all the sabers will be RMR cut with suppressor height sights from the factory. What about these slides? You were mentioning something on uh, these slides, right? Yeah. So all the slides on the saber line are going to come with an RMR cut from the factory. And we'll have different uh, options as far as night sights and suppressor high sights and stuff like that goes. Awesome. Um, we'll also have different options for uh, ported barrels and ported slides under the saber line. Yes. Um, to cut out some of that recoil. Yes. And then uh, threaded barrel and non-threaded barrel options as well. So whichever way you want to go there. So um, each of these sabers is going to come with a couple of these mag extensions uh, from the factory. You'll probably get three mags with two mag extensions. Yes. And then just one standard mag. And then you're also going to get a nice carrying case to go along with it, so you'll have a nice range bag. Awesome. Um, we don't have exact pricing on these. We know they're going to be well under $1,000, but staying extremely competitive with how the market is there. These are going to be polymer. They're going to be stippled from the factory. They feel a little more premium because of the stippling. Uh, but we do have a switch pistol that's going to have it on the Oh, well, yeah. excuse me then. <laughs> yeah. Well then, let's feel this. Okay, now I now I see it. I yeah. thought this this looked like it was actually a steel frame just by looking at, it, but it's a Cerakote. Yeah, the that's Cerakote. misleading me. Okay, wow, still a good trigger. Yeah. So let's move on down over here. What uh, what what's over here? You said the switch the pistol. Switch pistol. So the switch pistol is something really cool we're working on here. Um, you can see here uh, something a little different about this. You see this little. Uh, black area in here. That's yes. actually a chassis system. So, oh, instead of having to buy a new frame and a new serial every time, you're able to have this chassis, and you can swap it between uh, compact style frames to micro frames to full size frames with the same serial number. So, and the index is actually over here, right? Well, I say index, but is that screw what's holding the holding the uh, the? Uh... No, the chassis is held in place by some other mechanisms inside. That's actually for the removable grip panels down there. Got so it. You'll be able to change out your grips. You don't have to worry about stippling it anymore. As you mentioned earlier, this is a metal frame on this guy. Um, something pretty cool on this one is our, our new uh, dagger slide on it with yes. the um, compensator built in. Yeah. So that's something we're working on. We've already got that on the micro and people love it. Yes. Um, so we're bringing it to the compact size this year as well. Absolutely. Um, so it's a full size slide, but it's got a um, standard barrel in it with the mm. compensator up front to cut down on recoil. Yeah, compensators are great. I've been I've been using compensators on some of my Glocks, uh, and it makes it more smoother of a shoot with uh, yeah. with them. Yeah. So again, that's our switch pistol. Like I say, something you can uh, you know uh, make a, in a couple different flavors and keep the same serial number because of the chassis system. So that's something we're super excited. Uh, concept gun again, uh, but this one is uh, should be here you know before you know it. So we pretty much covered all the Sabre pistols over here, and then uh, we we got one more final thing, and it's. Talking about the, uh, what, were the what were the, some of the rifles? It's the uh, STG. Yeah, so we just have a quick uh, update from last year's concept guns to let you guys know what the progress has been since then. So if we want to go over there and check them out. Let's go look at it. So now we're over here with some updates from last year's concept guns. So um, up top is something everybody's super excited about, the STG 44. Um, so where last year um, we were kind of in the, hey, we're going to do this phase. Now we've actually got the uh, machining cells set up and all the 
all the processes to build them. So we're starting to build some rifles. We're learning the ins and outs of uh, making these things consistently. And we're getting into the pre-production phase of testing, making sure the longevity is there and the reliability is there. So I still can't provide a timeline until we get a little further into endurance testing. But right. um, these guys are being worked on and built every day, and we're running a lot of rounds through them to make sure they're going to last. Is there a lot of refinement going on through, uh, throughout the iterations? A lot of refinement, yeah. So there was a couple issues from the design we had last year, so we've made some small changes internally uh, just to improve the action and improve the experience for the customer. Absolutely. And then down here we've got something that everybody's been looking for, that's the uh, Crink. So we're super excited to announce that the Crink is coming to market in February of this year. So Amazing. Again, um, launching in 5.56, that 5.56 is uh, a little easier to find right now than 5.45. So we're starting with 5.56 and we'll go into the 5.45 300 blackout and the 7.62 by 39. Um, you can see back here, the cool thing on this is it comes with this SP Tactical Brace that kind of gives you the look of the original crank, um, but still gives you the legal pistol configuration. Yes. Um, you can tell in the back here, we've also included a side folding rear trunnion for those guys that do want to SBR the gun. All they'd have to do is uh, fill out their paperwork and then they can slap a triangle stock on there and have a clone correct version of the gun. Absolutely. Um, so like I say, utilizing our 101 Max to have a rock and lock 5.56 uh, crank off. 8-inch barrel up front, so it's compatible with most of the crank furniture that's out there. If anybody has it, I know it's kind of rare, but right. just in the off event you do have it, this is going to be compatible with it. So for those of you that are cloners, they're ready to help you out. Yeah, yeah. So um, everybody knows it's been almost impossible to get a crank to let the, you know, in recent times. So we're just trying to bring it at a, at a solid price point where the average American can have the crank they've always desired without <laughs> having to pay all those import fees and all the crazy prices. Right. So I can't give an exact price on these because it's really going to vary as far as what trigger we put in it, what handguard it has. Uh, but we will have some JMAC furniture options at launch. We'll also have some of these wooden options as well down here. Um, so it should be right around the area of our traditional like uh, clone uh, 104 to 105, uh, 103, the more premium AK rifles. So it's going to be right in that price range, nothing crazy. So um, like I say, just bring in a clone that every AK guy's been looking for for years and years, but they haven't been able to get. Right. We're bringing now in the crank off, and like I said, available in February. So awesome. All right, guys, that's pretty much it from Palmetto State over here. Thank you very much, Justin, for yeah. helping out uh, yeah. with all the presentations. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. Absolutely. This is David Lee from Asian with Hat, SHOT Show 2024. Stay tuned for the next video.